I must say today's conference is absolutely amazing. You can feel the energy in the room. You can feel all the ladies that are so united with the guest speakers that we have, you know, lined out for today. Um, it's all about women empowerment at the end of the day. and welcome to Shekinah Glorious Faith Ministries. Thank you so much for joining us today and for coming here to share your words on your career and for impacting us. Ma'am, could you please share with us what is it that you're experiencing? What is, what is it that you can take away from this conference today? Um, I must say today's conference is absolutely amazing. You can feel the energy in the room. You can feel all the ladies that are so united and um, I think also, you know, with the guest speakers that we have, you know, lined out for today, um, it's all about women empowerment at the end of the day. Never before have women felt so empowered and, you know, so ignited in terms of coming together and sharing stories and sharing ideas of how they can help each other on their spiritual journey, number one. Um, never before did women need more spir spirituality in their lives because women are hit with all kinds of you know, problems in this day and age, more so than before. And I think spiritualness is one of the things that they need to really embody in their daily lives to be able to help them to alleviate mental wellness. You know, the, uh, everybody's got mental issues uh, post-COVID, like I mentioned earlier on. And I think going on a spiritual journey really helps women to calm themselves, to sort of focus, keep their focus in their very, very busy lives. So I think that the line of the guest speakers today have really, really added value to that. So yeah, thank you so much. Ma'am, how do you see this conference empowering women in their spiritual journey and in their everyday lives, especially with what you have left them with? How do you see it impacting them? And what do you hope to see? Well, like I said earlier, you know, in terms of their spiritual journey, I think in our everyday lives, we are faced with a lot of stress. Um, women take on so many different roles in their daily lives, you know, being a mother, um, uh, you know, taking care of the kids, going to school, still being able to hold a career. And I think the one thing is when they make time to really, really, really focus on themselves, focus on the the inner wellness, focus on their spirituality. You know, this really gives them the strength to carry on. And especially on those hard days where they feel they really can't cope anymore. And believe me, I chat to a lot of ladies. Everybody's complaining about stress. They, they complain about burnout. This is the one thing that we need to do more often is to bring women together, help each other, understand each other's stories and realize that we are not alone in this journey. So I think this is the one thing that really empowers ladies in terms of coming together and understanding we're not alone. Ma'am, how do you see this organization, the Women of Divine Conference, Divine Connection Conference, impacting you on a personal level? Coming here today for the first time, um, I have read up a lot about the ministry, um, but coming here for the first time, sitting in that room, it really really moved me I felt an energy sort of creep in me and I felt my hair standing up on my hands listening to the ladies sing listening to them you know um, worship you know no matter what religious backgrounds we come from but when you come to an event like this I promise you at the end of the day we are all one because what we can take from this is only positivity what we can take from this is also being able to interact with women who are taking their spirituality, their spirituality seriously. Because if you take a look at the youngsters of today, not many people are actually focusing on that area of their lives, all right? It's all about being materialistic. It's all about, you know, being very, very, very uh, selfish. And that's why a lot of youngsters of today are turning to drugs, alcohol, etc. But the more we can get people to come into environments like this and realize that you know, we can support each other, we can motivate each other, we can empower each other on a spiritual level. It makes all the difference. Ma'am, we thank you so much for coming here to share with us your words, your very wise words. And we thank you so much for just sharing more and letting us into your career and more that we have also taken something from you. Thank you so much, ma'am. And we believe, we hope and believe that you shall be impacted greatly more in your life, spiritually as well. And thank you so much. Good morning to all our beautiful ladies sitting here today. I mean, from this side, oh my God. I mean, <laughs> 
just look at all of you. And, you know, as I stepped, uh, you know, into the hall today, I could just feel the energy, the divine, the love that's going around this room. And it's so lovely to see everybody so united and everybody on the same page. So ladies, thank you so much for having me here today. And, um, you know, there's a saying that goes, um, you empower a woman, you empower a nation, all right? And if you take a look at especially South African women, most of the women in South Africa are caregivers. It doesn't matter whether you're married, whether you have finished schooling, a lot of young girls in many homes today are also caregivers, all right? And it takes up a lot of their time so much so that they really do not give any time to think about their financial future, all right? And what we need to realize is that women are being more empowered ever than before through social media, through talking to their friends, etc. But before I dwell any more into my talk for today, I just want to know by a show of hands, how single mums do we have in the house today? Any single mums here? There are a few, all right. Any, um, who's married? Okay, lots of people married. Anybody planning to get married soon? Nobody? <laughs> all right. So the most important thing when it comes to financial planning is we need to understand as much as we can be married most women tend to leave the finances to the husband. We as women, we have to have full knowledge, even if we are married, what's happening in our finances. And most importantly, everybody sitting in this room today, whoever's got assets, houses, cars, if you've got minor children under the age of 18, you must, you must have a will. All right, a lot of people mention that they do have a will, but they do not understand the implications of that will. A will is not just a piece of paper that you put into action and you basically file it away. Sorry, it's actually timing out. Oh, sorry guys, it seems to be time. What is there another mic maybe? So in terms of having a will, very importantly when you do your financial planning, it's important for you to sit with your spouses and have a good understanding of the impact of having a will because when somebody passes away, all right, it's extremely important to understand what happens after. A lot of people don't know this, but when you pass away, your bank account gets frozen, all right? Then, until everything gets sorted out in your estate, all those expenses on a monthly basis, all right? Whether it's rental, whether it's the bond, whether you're paying for your cell phone accounts, whether you're paying for your medical aid, all those expenses still have to get paid even though that person has passed away. So ask yourself sitting here today, who takes care of the finances in the house? Do you understand where to pay your accounts? Do you understand what the account numbers are? Do you understand what's happening in your partner's finances? Do you understand where your will is currently being kept? Do you know where to go to find the will should your spouses pass away? These are very, very important matters. Just to give you a story, my partner passed away five months ago, all right? And death is something that we don't like talking about because it's a very morbid subject. A lot of people don't like talking about it. They feel very uncomfortable. But I've been a single mom for 21 years. My ex-husband passed away seven years ago, and now five months ago, my partner passed away. There was nothing wrong with him. He was healthy. He never had a heart issue, but he had terrible COVID, and it could have been that post-COVID, 
it actually affected his heart, all right? So exactly as we're having a gathering here today, on that very Saturday, he went out to basically play music within a community for a prayer service. He arrived home at eight o'clock, nine o'clock he came to bed, 20 minutes later he had a heart attack and within 15 minutes he was gone. And we were planning our future life. We had so many plans for our future. All right. And the whole time we were together for the past five years, we kept on arguing about sorting out his will, about getting his finances in order, because I've got 33 years of experience and it's, and it's ingrained in me. And only a month before he passed away, did he actually sort out all of this? Imagine if he didn't have his affairs in order, what would have happened, right? So you never know when the unexpected can actually happen, all right? And as women, we need to ensure that should something happen, we are taken care of, you can still maintain your lifestyle, especially if you have children your children can still go to the current schools they're going to, all right? You can still be able to pay medical aid for your children because imagine going to government hospitals. For some of us that do go to government hospitals, you know what the waiting line is like, how long it takes. You know, it's really not nice. And as mothers, we want to give our children the best education that we can. That's within our reach. All right? And it just takes one generation to make a whole difference for future generations, which is extremely important. If we take a look at South Africa, we are a nation of non-savers. We do not save. When I started work in 1991, I started saving 50 rand a month in a trust policy. 50 rand a month, right? 12 years into my marriage, I got married at the age of 20. 12 years into my marriage, I got divorced. After I got divorced, financially, I took care of both of my girls, who are now 27, 27 and 32 years old. I took care of them financially on my own. And if I did not save in all this time, I could have not put them I couldn't afford to put them in private school. I put them in a Model C school, but back then, it was still, you know, the schools were still good. I managed to put both of them through university. They stayed away from home. I had to still pay for all of that. I still bought them their cars when they turned 18 years old. And when my older daughter moved out into her own home, I helped her to, I gave her a little bit of a kickstart just to get her up and running in her home. Now my other daughter is going to be moving out soon and I'm going to be doing exactly the same thing. So you're probably thinking, yes, Seema, it's all, you know, fair, well and said. You managed to achieve it. But don't be fooled. I grew up in a farm, in a wooden iron house for many years, for 16 years. Our bathroom and our toilet was outside. We had to go to the pond to go and fetch water. And guess what? Back then, your parents would bring you up, they would shower you with love, yes, but nobody really spent time to give you advice in terms of your future career, in terms of savings, in terms of how do you as a woman take care of yourself, right? I continue to read, I continue to dream. I wanted a good life for myself because I saw a lot of people around me in terms of how they live their lives without worrying about the future. And that's how I managed to get out of poverty. We grew up very poor, all right? And I proudly stand here today and say that every single thing that I've achieved in my life, I've done it on my own, not through having a partner, not through having a husband, I've done it on my own, all right? So I think it's very, very important 
to make that decision today and ask yourself, do you have a will? If yes, do you understand the implications of your will when somebody passes away, right? The next question you've got to ask yourself is, do you understand how much it's going to cost when someone passes away to be able to pay all those expenses? Because when somebody dies, you've got to pay something called executor's fees, depending on the amount of your estate. If it's above 3.5 million, you've got to pay 10% estate duty as well. And then if you have a property, if the property is getting transferred, there's conveyancing fees, there's transfer duty. So there's a whole lot of costs involved. So when you get a will done, your financial advisor, or when you go into a bank, there's something called a liquidity calculation. It's very simple. They take a look at all your assets, and they basically calculate on that how much of fees you're going to pay, and they are able to tell you there and then what it's going to cost you, all right? And then, if you have minor children, remember when you pass away and you leave things to your minor children, you want them to inherit. You want your children to inherit, and if they're below the age of 18, it's very important to protect their inheritance, right? So when you do a will, there's a tiny little box on the application form that says, when you pass away, do you want a testamentary trust to be set up for your children? And when, that, when you pass away, your children's inheritance gets protected in that trust, which the executors do on your behalf. You don't have to worry about anything just to ensure that your children's inheritance is protected. And ladies, think about it. When we have a death in the family, the drama is real. <laughs> because everybody wants to get involved, everybody wants to have their say. People that you haven't even spoken to in months or years suddenly rock up to give their condolences. Everybody wants to get into your business. So much so that sometimes close family members stop talking to each other. It's sad. It's happened to me. Family members stop talking to each other. There's so many disputes in the family. Why do we need it at a time when people are grieving? Why do we need it at a time when we all should come closer together and help each other and be there for each other? So a will solidifies that person's last wishes. And by the way, with APSA, your will is for free. We do it for free. We do not charge you for your will, right? The only thing we charge you is 115 rand a year to basically keep your will in safe custody to ensure that should something happen, your family knows where to go and who to speak to to get that will, which is important, all right? And our financial advisors sit with you and they actually do the calculation for you for free as well. So it's one hour's worth of work by professionals who do it for free for you. Do not, this doesn't sound right, but you can have your will done with a lawyer. But remember, companies that are as big as APSA, Standard Bank, NetBank, those companies, no matter who resigns or who leaves, those companies are still standing. When you go to a small business, right, of lawyers, you never know if that company is still going to be there in another four, five years' time or ten years' time. And then, when somebody passes on, where's that will gone to? Do you understand how much of fees they're going to charge you? All right? Very important. Before I go on, are there any questions? Any questions from anyone? No questions? Okay, now let's move on to life cover, all right? Now, I'm sure many ladies that are here who are currently working for a corporate company, you do have group benefits where you have life insurance, you have your pension, etc., etc. all right? One thing to remember is ladies are very unique, 
ladies in general, and I see there are a few men sitting in the crowd, <laughs> ladies in general are much stronger than men when it comes to health, and we live longer, two to five years longer than men. It's a proven fact, right? Now, if in my family, for example, my mom is in her 70s, my dad is in his 80s, and as much as my dad thought that he was preparing for retirement, he ran short at a very young age. So now, what happens for the rest of the time? We as children, we end up taking care of our parents. But the younger generation sitting here has the opportunity now to make those changes and ensure that our moms and dads are well taken care of. We are well taken care of. We do not depend on our children when we get older so we can take care of ourselves. All right? So very important to have something called a financial needs analysis done for you. It sounds rocket science, but believe me, it's not. A financial needs analysis basically is when we come to you, we discuss your personal goals. We are try to understand what your dreams are in life into the future, not just for your family, but for yourself as well. Maybe you want to take a nice holiday. Maybe when you retire, you want to open up a business, right? Because face it, there's no such, as much as people retire, people work. They continue to work. Because what happens when you retire and you're suddenly working? You get depressed, right? Social interaction is very important. Human beings are not put on this earth to be alone. We need to have that interaction. And if you take a look at mental illness post-COVID, the numbers are gone up by 40%, right? What happened during COVID? We were all gone into isolation. For how long didn't we have that social interaction that we are used to? And from all of us being ill, by the way, I was on oxygen support for nine months right? By the miracle of God, I got saved because I wasn't supposed to be standing here today. I had COVID pneumonia in both my lungs and my lungs were totally damaged. My lungs are permanently damaged as I stand here today. But through the grace of God, I was saved, right? Who expected that? Right? And that is why I'm saying it is so important for us as ladies to give ourselves that time. We don't have to feel guilty about taking time out for self-care. We do not have to feel guilty for taking care of our finances. And we need to have open discussions with our families, with our partners, with our children, so that they have a good understanding that we also matter. Our story also matters, and that's EPSA's logo, by the way. That's EPSA's brand. Our story matters, right? Because often we want to sit, and we basically keep sort of embracing other people's problems, and we don't realize that the weight gets so much on our shoulders that we do not make time for ourselves and take care of ourselves. Because if I genuinely ask all the ladies in the room today, how much time do you give yourself on a weekly basis where it's just me time, right? Yes, sometimes we book our appointment to go do our nails, we have a facial, or we go out and meet people, etc. But let it be consistent. Don't forget about yourself. Don't put yourself last. Remember, if you do not take care of yourself, you cannot, you cannot take care of your family, which is extremely important. All right, so life, coming back to life cover, what that does for you is it ensures that should something happen and your income is extremely important in the household, that that life cover policy can basically supplement that income. So you can basically maintain your lifestyle, which is extremely important, all right? You don't want to upheave your lifestyle. So I've discussed the will, I've discussed life cover, um, I've discussed the importance of retirement, right, to make sure that you save for your future, that's extremely important, all right, 
And then lastly, for those ladies that are married here, your marital regime, are you married in community of property? Are you married ANC or are you married ANC with accrual? Right? Now, from the generation that I come in, 99.9% .9 of people got married community of property. <laughs> All right? And it's important for you to understand how this impacts you. Because most people don't. If you are married in community of property and your husband has a business, right, you are liable for 50% of that debt. You need to understand the implications of being married in community of property. Very important. Also, when you pass away, what are the implications? You know? So, when you sit with a financial advisor, which, like I say, doesn't cost anything. Every single person sitting here has a unique story. Every person sitting here has a very unique financial plan. It's not a one-size-fits-all plan. We sit with you individually. We understand your family dynamics. We understand your personal goals. We understand your current goals, your future goals. We take a look at how we can also help you to budget. Because often money comes in and money goes. Think about our mothers. Think about our grandmothers back in the day. With the little that they had, they managed to run a whole household. Think about it. The money went very far. They managed to put food on the table, the children still had clothes. I still remember my mom used to even sew me clothes. I only had one uniform. I used to come home every day and wash my uniform and wait the next day. But we never went a day without food. Because my mom was so savvy with money, even now today. Even if she has money, she doesn't tell us. <laughs> but she manages to make that money last like you can't believe. But what happens to the generations of today? Money comes, money goes. Why? We do not understand the importance of money for the future. Okay? Which is extremely important. So ladies, please, if you do have time, the APSA table is outside. Please do interact with us. I will also leave my number should you need to chat to me. We will come and meet you wherever we need to. Face to face, personally and we will assist you with whatever questions you have and your finances as well. All right, so thank you very much.